today's episode is brought to you by the amazing people at DraftKings Sportsbook. You know, the NFL's official sports betting partner. Yes, indeed. Safe, secure, and reliable. And ladies and gentlemen, for the big game this weekend, they have something awesome going on, ladies. Yes, yes, yes. I'm talking about a super duper 56 to 1 odds on the big game. You bet $5, you'll win up to $280 in free bets. All you have to do is pick either the team from LA and they win or the team from Cincinnati and they win. It is that simple. But, Deke, you got to use the promo code. And the promo code is MOATS. It is that simple. M-O-A-T-S. You use that promo code, you put that bet in there, and you win it on the big game. Pooh-wee. Then after that, man, you listen to our advice and make you some more money. I'm excited when for you some repurpose of these props that money. for the big game. Absolutely. So, that's how it's going to be. And shout out to DraftKings. But we also know this. When you're making money or attempting to make money, sometimes that quest can be a little tough. Sometimes you can get lost. You're chasing the purple dragon. Time. Yeah, you're chasing it and you can get lost on that, on that, on that road. You feel me? Mm-hmm. All I would say is this. If you happen to know someone with a gambling problem, maybe they need crisis counseling or referral services and they're located in New York, they should probably just call 877-8-HOPE-NEW-YORK or hope and why excuse me on that one once again it's 8778 hope and why all right that's if you're located in new york now deke if you're located anywhere else you know what you need to do i'm not located in new york well you better call 1-800-GAMBLER i say i say you better call 1-800-GAMBLER <laughs> veteran in the sense inexpensive in the sense dual threat ability in the sense Fits what Matt Canada's looking for in a sense. Pro bowler as well. <laughs> you know I was going to throw that in there. You know I was going to throw that in there. Led a team to the postseason before. And he happens to have a unique ability to whoever is backing him up. They're going to become the guy. So you bring in Tyrod this offseason. And you draft whatever quarterback you want to draft. Whoever you think is going to be your guy. Not even that you see on tape, but just you just love. Because you know if he's backing up Tyrod, Tyrod goes out there and starts. He's going to play. He's going to do his thing. But something tragic, something weird is going to happen. And it's going to open the door. And then that next guy is going to come in and they're going to thrive. What would so it be I'm in Pittsburgh? It, What's a Pittsburgh type of thing that would derail Tyrod? He, he got hurt going down to Primanis. You know, uh, he slipped on... Is he hitting the clubs? No, no, no. It would be a Todd Haley that. situation. I mean, I, I mean, we ain't going to do him like that. I'm trying to think. What, 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 what can we have for him? Oh, man. Yeah, we can't say ice if it's early in the season. Right, right. Maybe he got lost on the Clemente, you know? Yeah, he thought he was supposed to be going this way. He went the other way. He got lost. They locked him up with one of them little, you know, the little locks they got on the up bridge. Yeah, he got stuck there. And that's what happened. Opened the door for whoever was QB2 just for that particular game. And then... Yeah, that you know goes, they is? go on their balls out. You know man. what it is? What is it's it? Food poisoning. That's what oh, it would be. That's what no. it would be. Yeah. He was down. What, what, what part of town was he in? I'm going to let you do the slander, not me. <laughs> Where was he at? Was he Mount Washington? Was he up north? Was he Cranberry? Was he Wexford? Where was he at, man? I got to think right now where he's at in his career. He's trying to eat healthy. So he's probably going to score a hill then. What you think? Yeah, is there any Pittsburgh specific places out there that's <laughs> semi healthy? <laughs> Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's what it out, is. Man. It's food poisoning. He has yeah. to sit out that game. And whoever we it's draft the as the QB two goes in there, balls out, and it was like, oh, well, we can't pull the, we can't make that switch just yet, you know. And then we'll go. Because you there. would say Permanis, yeah, but I don't think he's eating at Permanis at the stage you were. Yeah, I don't think you're doing that. You're absolutely right, man. You're right. But no, in all seriousness, though, man, the Tyrod uh, conversation, man, I would be for it um, because he does meet some of the criteria that we're looking for. A guy that has athletic ability, a guy that can throw the ball. Tyrod definitely checks both of those boxes. He can run and he can definitely throw the ball. You talk about leadership. You look at some of the places he's had to go into and, in a sense, turn those franchises around or keep them afloat until the franchise quarterback stepped in. Buffalo, prime example. He was a person that was there, really got them going in the right direction, broke the playoff drought. Then after that, they get in Josh Allen. The rest is history. You think about when he goes to Cleveland. That was on the hills of them having what back to back just one or zero win seasons. 
He comes in. Obviously, that offseason was more so the, the real important part. But then after that, Baker takes over at the beginning of the season and they go from there. San Diego or what? Yeah, because it was in, it was San Diego for him. Or did they go to L.A. by then? It might have just might have been that first year in L.A. for them. I think it was first. I think year it might in have LA. been the first year in that LA. Was Herbert. Yeah, so that first year in LA, he goes out there. But once again, there's still question marks around Anthony Lynn in that situation. And yeah, he goes out there. He still kind of calms it for them. He might have been a backup to Rivers the year before. That, and then, like they brought right, him back. and then went yeah. okay because I was I felt like it he had one year in San Diego and then, and then went to LA. Or no, no, no. You know what? Though? But no, Rivers last year was in San Diego. You're absolutely. right. I mean, it was in LA. You're right. Yeah, it's because they it had to be LA. Stadium. Yeah, they had to be LA stadium. Yeah. Yeah. So once again, bad situation. Or not the best or most ideal situation in terms of when Phillip left, because that's when he left to go to Indy. Tyrod was the guy that they had brought in to kind of calm the storm. You draft Herbert. But once again, he's that bridge guy. And even down in Houston right now, barring him getting hurt, we joked about it. We was like, man, it's crazy. But man, they low-key was all right. And then obviously Davis Mills came in and he he was able to continue on as well. But they're talking about not drafting a quarterback because they of Davis right now. With, yeah, with Davis Mills here, which holds true to my theory though. Whoever's backing up Tyrod, I don't know if he's giving them like elite level like coaching, coaching or motivation, confidence, whatever it is. But these guys come in and play behind him. They play really well. So for me, man, I do think that he could be somebody that you would consider because he is going to be a cheaper option. I honestly think he'll. He'll be he'll cost more than Mason, but I think right in that Mariota, I think he's a lot cheaper though than like what a Jameis would probably command on the open market. I don't think he's anywhere in that vein for money, but you would get him. I say anywhere between. I'm going anywhere you between like contract was? eight to twelve. Ooh. I feel like twelve is the absolute high end, but I think eight is probably like realistic, and I would probably settle on ten because I like him. That feels like a lot to me. Fair enough. No, no. I said 10 because I like him. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see but what his Mason, contract was Mason last year. Because Mason has five. He had five and a half last yeah. year. One year, five mm-hmm. and a half. Uh, feels like a Fitzpatrick scenario to me. Mm-hmm. At no, least, it's very true to that. At least with yeah. Fitzpatrick, in my opinion, you're mm-hmm. going to get the highs. You're going to get yes. way more highs, mm-hmm. which would get you excited. Would yeah. get the fan base a little bit more excited. With Tyrod, well, either in either scenario, I'm not feeling like amazing about them being the starting right. quarterback this season because I don't really feel like we're going to win anything. Mm. Keep us relevant, maybe, but yeah, yeah it's just going to be the bridge guy to the next guy. We're going to yeah. be talking about the whole season. When's Haskins coming in? When's right. Mason coming in? That's all because I think we'll be like a 500 team. Yeah. But in all honesty, though, not saying t- we won't be with Mason or Haskins, but at least I feel like there's the upside of could this be the franchise guy? I just think for me, the thing with a tie rod, when you go that route, you're not bringing him in to be your franchise guy. You're bringing him in st- for stability for at least that season. But best case scenario is you only need him for the first five games. And then after that, hopefully the guy that you have drafted or, yeah, or if he's just a backup. But Either way, him on your roster, you feel a lot more confident with him in your quarterback room compared to as it currently sits with Haskins and Mason, who are really big question marks in terms of can they be starters for full seasons and actually win. Tyrod has already proven that he could do that. He's already done that in less advantageous situations as well. And he also has the personal accolades to the extent that even though we joke about, man, you know, third or fourth Pro Bowl, or Pro Bowl Alton, alternate, we can't even say that about Haskins and Mason, and both of those guys have been in the league for multiple seasons as well. So for me, when I think of that in, in, in the full clarity of it, I still say I entertain. I would entertain the Tyrod thing just because I think the price point. I mean, if you're saying he signed, he was on a five million dollar deal last year, five and a half, five and a half. I'm coming back to see if he'll take it again. But I'll be willing to go a little bit higher just because of when I think of what Mason has. And as players, we will do this. If I'm considering coming to your organization and I think I'm better than this guy and I know you got the money for it, whatever his pay is, I want to have more than that. And if he has the accolades and he has the resume that backs it up, which he does, that's why for me, I was like, man, if we're only talking a difference of two mil for him who opens up another door in terms of really giving you a dual threat right now as a short term solution, then, yeah, I do like that option. So what I'm thinking with him and Fitzpatrick, mm-hmm. if it's anything above five, dude, I just don't even, I mean, with them, it's got to be like three. I, I don't feel anything, I don't feel good at anything above five just because so then why I don't do you think we're Mason learning sit anything. at the five though? Huh? So then why are you comfortable with Mason at five then? 
uh, with I'm not. He's already on the roster. Rush. That's the problem. I right. would rather sign Jameis or Mariota if the numbers no, no, are absolutely, close yeah. That's my absolutely. thing. Sign those. If you're going to do free agency, but I, think, I want Jameis or Mariota. At least you could learn something mm-hmm. and see if they could be a guy for the future for but you. But when did we both agree that both of those guys are going to be on the higher end in terms of the pay spectrum that we are discussing? Not even in the sense of like uh, trading for a contract, but in terms of just open market negotiation. Those two guys are going to be a lot higher in terms of what we're having to commit to them. They'll be at what? Probably eight, seven, eight. If you're Jameis, I think double digits for Jameis. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. But I would rather do that than pay one of these dudes like three yeah. or four because then the three or four could go to some other position. True. But what if in the three or four you're still able to acquire a veteran lineman that you might have want that you might have wanted to pick up in free agency and you still have that flexibility because you didn't allocate a ton of money. So worst case, right? You already said it yourself, and we obviously agree that hey, the expectations around this season are a little different. It's not this ironclad, we're trying to do whatever it takes to get to the Super Bowl because we know depends on what we do though. Right. But just based on how they typically operate. For them to, it would need to look like a LA Rams type offseason for it to be, hey, we're going to, we're trying to win the Super Bowl this year. Now, are they capable of it? Yes. Do they have the resources? Absolutely. But we also know the history of it. So we can't say history, history when we're talking about different trades or, or different, you know, perspectives like that. But then when we're talking about their un, you know, candidate ability to just commit to win, they're going to do whatever it takes because we've seen in the recent history that that's not how they operate so with that that's why i just think of a guy like a tyrod not specifically tyrod but just a person like him or in that framework you still can get away with him and still build your roster up through the draft and through agency this all season and it doesn't take away from whatever you want to do a year from now if you're really trying to say you know what that's my franchise quarterback, whether he's still in college right now or if he's a guy on the last year of his deal on somebody's roster right now I just think of it kind of like that versus like if you commit like that to Jameis or to a Mariota, not less to Mariota because I don't think he's going to cost as much, but definitely for a Jameis. When you commit that type of money, I just think to myself, what if it didn't work out? That's the part for me, because I'm like, man, at least with the Tyrod situation, I still have already acquired one to two other players additionally that I'm probably going to be able to have for a one or two year deal. Whereas for the Jameis with that 10 or 12 potential that he would get if he fails we don't have the other two guys that at least make us feel like well you know we still had a good offseason we brought in all three of these guys two were good one didn't work out you know we're good with this is going to be pass or fail all based on james because what we would allocate to him i just don't know if there's a pass if we get tyrod or fitzpatrick Mm -hmm. because we'll be capped that's my problem i'd rather take the risk like honestly i'd rather start haskins over fitzpatrick or Mm. or tyrod okay like that's why i don't even wouldn't even really want to bring them in just spend Mm. the three four elsewhere if you're gonna do that i mean but if you're gonna do quarterback Mm -hmm. get the Jameis or Mariota, the first round talent maybe there's some something left in the tank with them that's kind of my standpoint i'd rather just start haskins because if it if it goes bad from your standpoint either it's Jameis, either mm-hmm. you know mason or haskins then i get i don't i don't want to say tank but it's like okay now we're gonna have a high pick see yeah it's, it's, see your folks want to drop i look down. at it like this i say hey if it doesn't work with tyrod i could easily go back to a haskins i could go back to a mason because they're already on the roster whereas if i start with those guys and i didn't do anything to this quarterback room to bring in any other talent of of, of, of equivalence then i'm going to hate that feeling when i'm sitting here three four weeks in and i'm like man he's not the guy and we don't have another option that's all you know what i mean whereas like with a tie ride with the Fitzpatrick, some of those veteran guys You're proven but a lot lower season. yeah because we've already said like i'm not into the tanking business i don't want to tank this is not fun to watch no, I'm not, not for it either, but you know, but that's next off season, though, yeah. you'd be like, secretly, it was kind of good for us if it plays out that way. Right, but that's a it's big It's not something if, you're rooting for. Yeah, not Definitely at all. Definitely not. Man, and I still feel like we have enough pieces in place that if you maneuver this offseason correctly, you can still be in that I conversation. Know, that's how I feel. But I don't feel like that. I feel like you, you set yourself up a little bit for failure if you just roll into that season with that mindset of, man, we're going to roll with either Haskins or Mason. Whatever happens, happens. If it's great, it's great. But if not, what the hey, man, we just throw the season to build on next year. That's all I'm saying. I do think, though, if it is Mason, now between Mason and Haskins, he has the better floor mm-hmm. because we went 8-8 eight and eight yeah. with a combination of him and Duck already. And that was probably, 
when we're going to look back on his career, that was probably his worst, his worst part. part. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That was his worst part. Mm-hmm. I think at this point, he's probably better than that. Yeah, I That's would why agree. I think, all right, let's just go. If it's going to be Mason, mm-hmm. I'll just go with Mason over Tyrod or Fitzpatrick. Fair enough. Ultimately, I want Haskins over Mason, but right. you get my point. I'll just mm-hmm. go with one of the two guys we got on the roster instead of signing one of them for three or four mil. Yeah. No, I like it, man. Whereas with Jameis or Mariota, they bring a different element. Jameis has proven to be like a top 15 guy when he's mm-hmm. good. Mariota's got that speed. Both, you know, top two talents in the yeah. draft. I mean, yeah, super. The talent is I'd be undeniable. willing to take the chance on yeah. that. And they've proven to be decent quarterbacks in mm-hmm. the NFL. Mariota didn't really have a team around him with the Titans. Yeah. And Jameis, just up and down. But mm-hmm. he, obviously with the Saints, he's been able to do a lot better. 